Go for it. Thank you. So I am a pinch hitter. I'm also uh, I have a schedule which requires me to leave uh, sort of early, so I apologize to my fellow panelists and the audience that I will have to leave. Uh, so I've put together uh, four or five points which I hope are specific and uh, were very much made on the fly, so uh, take it as, uh, as that. The first point I want to make is that uh, it, we talk about industry, we have talked about industry already here. Um, industry obviously is not a monolith. Uh, just as uh, dollars and the marketplace and capitalism uh, are, are not antithetical to evidence-based medicine or to good clinical practice. Um, to give you a sense of the non-monolithic nature of industry, I am the first chief medical officer of Life Technologies. Uh, as Bernie Lowe knows, uh, I've published on conflict of interest with Mildred Choi, uh, who's a, who's a, um, who runs the Ethics Institute at Stanford, and uh, my colleague Sheldon Krimsky at the Council for Responsible Genetics has published a uh, well-known study on uh, conflicts of interest in, um, uh, in research. So uh, I've had a long um, association with work on conflict of interest. I'm in industry. Um, second point I'd like to make is that uh, in amplification of innovation, as I said earlier, absolutely essential to meet the goals uh, of the healthcare system. That is the unmet need of patients, reducing the cost of health care and removing uh, the waste that's uh, so much a part of our system. Uh, collaborations with industry, whether those collaborations are vendor vending relationships, scientific relationships, licensing, philanthropy, all are essential to that goal of uh, amplification of innovation and better innovation. Um, I would say as my next point that Research and development and basic science is a system of interested parties acting in concert. Uh, let me give you, a, yeah, everyone sort of knows that scientists are ambitious and look after their careers, as do physicians. Uh, but, you know, we could also say that FDA, which is charged with uh, the safety and efficacy of our, uh, of our uh, healthcare system, uh, also uses user fees from industry to uh, do that, and so has, uh, and there are, uh, is interested in those user fees. Um, uh, academia, uh, we've heard about their uh, interest in getting licensing uh, for their uh, intellectual property. Uh, so uh, we're all interested parties. The, the real safety net here is that, uh, is the rationality of the scientific process and the system of interested parties working in concert as the scientific enterprise and as the uh, medical enterprise. And so uh, I, I, the fact that people are, have uh, a conflicted interest is not in and of itself a problem as far as I'm concerned. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I believe in my own experience um, with, uh, uh, with these issues that harmonization of the rules, simplification of the rules, uh, and uh, uh, clarification of things like uh, IRB oversight and uh, the influence of HIPAA and GINA and so forth uh, are extremely important. The measurement should be public knowledge about the, the goodness that comes out of research and public participation in research. That's an outcome that could be measured uh, as a, a result uh, of uh, simplification and harmonization of uh, much of the issues that we're talking about. Um, I, I do think, and I agree with the comments earlier, that uh, more evidence about the uh, harms uh, of the current system and uh, a risk, uh, a social, a risk related uh, kind of phenomenon would be very useful. The final point I'd like to make is that um, one of the very first clinical trials that ever occurred was in the 18th century and was concerned with the uh, treatment of scurvy. Uh, as many of you know, scurvy killed many more people in the British Navy than the French or the, or the uh, Spanish uh, who they were uh, fighting with ever did. Um, the clinical trial took place in the, the mid-1700s. It took about 50 years for the British Admiralty to adopt a uh, better treatment of, uh, the, the British Na in the British Navy of the disease scurvy. Uh, the point, of course, is that we would like to do better in, uh, in the in, uh, current times of translational research and clinical research and commercial and clinical application of medical advances than uh, occurred uh, in the 18th century uh, in uh, Britain. Uh, collaboration with industry, uh, and that could be collaboration uh, around education, which industry sometimes calls marketing, or it could be collaboration in education, which industry sometimes called sales promotion. 
Uh, that's an important part of translation and, uh, and application, and it's not all bad. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Um, next is Todd Shearer from Emory University.